Woo! Come on, come on. Glory to God. Lord, let this place come alive tonight, Lord. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Send your spirit, send the power. Send your power in this place. Whoa. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Somebody turn to somebody and say, you are going to leave here in power. You're going to leave here all powered up. Come on. I'm up here. I'm up here uh, to prepare the way for the queen. And uh, praise God. You know, through the prophetic words and even the offering, I just felt to, to say something. Um, for about 20 years, I had desired to go to India. Uh, from Bible college, I had a vision. I wanted to go. I prepared. I fasted and prayed in Bible college every lunch hour, every Thursday lunch hour, the best meal, all right, throughout college, or most of them anyway. I tried to make uh, uh, it work a few times. You know how it is? You feel you're supposed to do something, you try to make it work, and it didn't work out. And one, one attempt, it just failed. And, uh, and so in the, year, in the fall of 2000, uh, 1999, uh, I felt we were supposed to give $1,000. Our, our, our sister said, I'd never given $1,000 before. This was a stretch. We didn't, we didn't have it, but I really felt God saying, so in $1,000 to this speaker. I didn't know why, just like Anne Marie said. I'm looking for Anne Marie, I don't see her. Oh, there she is, how could I miss? I'm looking over in this area, over here. I, I know what you mean, so $1,000. I can take you right to the church, abundant life. I can take you in the overflow. I could probably take you to the very seat I was sitting in and God, and where I was filling out and writing out the check. Victoria normally writes out the checks. And, um, and so we sewed. And three months later, I was in India. Yeah. All paid for. Talk about power. We saw the power of God come down. We saw eyes, blind eyes open, deaf ears open. I'd never seen anything like this in the magnitude of it. It, it was, we we're preaching in small villages. It was incredible. And then a couple of months, three, four months after I got back from India, I happened to go to Ashland, Virginia. We heard about this camp. And we went down, and that's where we met Dr. Russ, all right? And this power infusion, because when I was in India, I said, we, we were in a live uh, Pentecostal church, but it's, there was still something. Right from when I got saved, I'm like, I read the book of Acts before I went to church. I, I, I didn't get saved in church. I'm reading the book of Acts, and I go to church, and I'm like, I'm expecting the dead to be raised. I'm expecting blind eyes to be open, deaf ears open. And it was a good church, but it didn't happen. And you see a little bit, and you'd read about it. You'd always read about it on the mission field. And I'm like, I want to see that here. I want to see it now. Yeah. We're going to see it, folks. We're already seeing it. Yeah. Since I met Dr. Russ, we've traveled so many places. We've seen so many miracles. I, I could be, I only got 20 minutes, all right? Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, power. I'm telling you, Dr. Russ has written a couple of new books. I, I'm, I'm reading this one right now. My wife is reading the other one, Revive uh, and, and, and Restore book, uh, Refresh, Revive, and Restore. I want I to read something. It really ties right in in this book. Yeah, I'm getting to that age where you have to change, change glasses. <laughs> All right, um, powerful book, Awaken to the, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to get this book. You need, you need to get this book and the other book, Victoria's blown away by the other one, she keeps squealing about this book, all right? Listen to this, 
Yes, there's power in unity, power in the cross, power in the very name of Jesus, power in his blood, power in the resurrection, power in his spirit, power in the word, power in his presence, and we need his power. Come on. Oh, I'm not done. This is the power to win, but it's also the power to change the power to overcome, the power to heal, the power to save, the power to deliver. We're not done. The power to gain wealth. We need this power. Anybody need this power? One more paragraph. One more paragraph here. Powerful book. You need to get, how many people have already gotten this book? All right, that means the rest of you need to see the book, book uh, store, right? I'm telling you, it is a now word. It's not something dry and old. None of Russ's, Dr. Russ's books are, are, are that way. But this is a word for right now. Personally, that's Dr. Russ saying, I want the power and presence of God. I'm not willing to settle. You can almost hear him say this, all right? Without the other. He's looking for men and women of faith who will contend with him for the fulfillment of his promises and his word. He is not afraid or intimidated by our faith, that's God, to believe for the supernatural, the gifts of the Spirit. We've been seeing the gifts and the power and the manifestation. I'm telling you, uh, already this is the best camp ever. I have been blown away sitting down here. I don't know. Dr. Russ is in a whole new place right now. Anybody agree? I'm, I'm telling you, I've never heard him preach so good. It is, it, I, I'm being challenged, transformed. I'm telling you, it's amazing. God is moved by our faith. Our faith pleases God. You know, the Bible says in first, in uh, the chapter, um, Acts 1, 8, you shall receive. Power. You shall receive. Power. You shall receive. Power. power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Whoo, hallelujah. Psalm 51 is often on my heart, especially that verses 10, 11, and 12. There's a song about it. Some of you know it. Create in me a clean heart and renew a... Let, let me bring a correction. All right? It, right is okay, but most translations or many translations say steadfast spirit. In other words, uh, don't just get right for the moment. Be steadfast, continually right with God. <laughs> Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then the word, restore. Restore unto me the Joy of your salvation, renew a right or steadfast spirit within me. Restore, restore, restore yes. the joy of our salvation. How many people feel like your joy of your salvation is being renewed, restored this camp? All right, that's, that's what's happening to many of us, all right? Oh, Shabba Baba Kanda. And so tonight I want to talk about salvation. I want to talk about the joy of our salvation, but even more specific, I want to talk about the value of our souls, the value of a soul. And I don't have enough time to really go into it, but I'm going to leave you, I'm going to dig in to a couple of verses in a few minutes. And if you listen, I think there'll be something you'll take for the rest of your life. There's something in profound uh, that you'll never look at the lost and the hurting and the broken the same way. And there'll be a passion for you to share the gospel with people on a day-to-day, -day, moment by moment basis. You know, when I got saved, um, the Lord led me uh, on my break at work. I used to read the Bible on my break, and he brought me into Timothy where it says, do the work of a evangelist. It just jumped off the page. I heard that happening. It never happened. All right. And then he gave me a life verse. Matthew 4, 19. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you a fisher of men. Come on. That's what God is calling. We need to be witnesses. 
All right, uh, oftentimes it's said in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. But in the, in the kingdom of God, it's about souls, souls, souls. You know, we are in a battle right now for souls. We are in a battle right now for souls. It is, Dr. Russ says this often. He says there's nothing greater on God's heart than souls. Let me ask you a question. Why are souls so important to him? I mean, I could preach on an hour on that, but I'm going to take about two minutes and try to encapsulate that. How many people have children? I'm telling you, when we walked in and we saw Herschel's oldest daughter, Sydney, I'm telling you, uh, I was amazed. Like, you know, and all the rest of them. We, Victoria and I don't have uh, natural children. We got spiritual kitties, yeah. all right? Uh, but I've been around enough parents. They'll do absolutely anything for their kids. You know, my, my parents, they weren't well-to-do or anything like that, and they sacrificed yeah. so that we could have this or that or whatever. Uh, and, and, and they'll go without. And, and, and parents would even lay down their life. Look what Sandra said here two nights ago on Monday night when, when her eight-year-old was in the hospital, and she cried out to God, and she said, God, take me, don't take him. That gives you a little picture. Where, where, did, where did we get that, uh, uh, that, that desire, our right, for our kids, and that we would, well, why are, why are children so precious? It come, it's a gift from God. It's, children are a gift from God. And he is our heavenly father. Therefore, he thinks even greater than we do about his kitties. All right? You are precious to him, all right? Um, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that amazing that everybody in the world seems to know that scripture? But what about the next scripture, number 17? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him all the world would be saved. God is interested in souls. In Romans 8, I mean 5 verse 8, <clears throat> it says this, But God demonstrates his own love for us that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. All right, let's dive into these verses uh, very quickly. Matthew chapter, whoa, there's a fire up here for sure. Wow, 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 praise God. Matthew chapter 27, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to read this very familiar, very well-known portion, and then we're going to go back into the Old Testament to where the prophet said it. And it says here, uh, 27, sorry, 27 verse uh, 9 and 10. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, saying, And they took the 30 pieces or shekels of silver, uh, the price of one, the price of the one whose price had been set by the sons of Israel. Oh, I, I'm just getting more downloads here, and I don't have time to, to explain it. All right, uh, I'll just go with what I got. And they gave them for a potter's field, as the Lord um, directed. Okay directed me. In other words, Judas gave this 30 pieces of silver, and then he came back and says, I don't want it. I, there, I've got blood on my hands. And he threw it to the, 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 uh, the priests, the religious leaders, and the religious leaders, you can read it here yourself, and they said, this money's got blood on it. 
What are we supposed to do with it? And so what did they do? They went out and bought a potter's field. Go with me to Zechariah. Zechariah. This is where they're quoting from. Zechariah. It's right to the left. All right. Uh, verse chapter 11. And look at verses 12. These are the verses I want to, you to really look at. These are the verses that were quoted. Oh. And I said to them, if it is good in your sight, give me my wages, but if not, never mind. Zechariah is play acting here. He is being sarcastic. They're not receiving what the prophet is saying. So he says, well, uh, then if you won't, uh, just give me my wages. And it says here, what do they do? They, they count it and they weighed out 30 shekels of silver as his wages. Then the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter that I might, that magnificent price, he's being sarcastic again, that incredible huge price they're going to give me for my wages. All right? That I was valued by them, so I took the 30 shekels of silver and threw them to the potter in the house of the Lord. This was fulfilled when Jesus was betrayed. Dr. Russ talked about betrayal, all right, that if, you, if, if, if we're as good as Jesus and, and he had one in 12, if we have 120, ouch, all right? And so if you look at the price, 30 pieces, if, uh, we don't have time to do it tonight, but Exodus 21, 31, we find out the lowest price that you could purchase a slave in the Old Testament was 30 pieces of silver. Are, are you getting where I'm going right now? All right? And so uh, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces. The religious people knew that a slave was worth 30 pieces of silver. They saw all they thought about of Jesus, all they thought about him was a slave, just somebody worth a worthless human being. All right. In fact, they considered him a threat. They considered him, in fact, a political and a religious threat to the, the, the what's happening in that time. And that could speak in a lot of different directions, and we're not going to go there. Uh, and so they bought. A potter's field. It was, it was prophesied. Can, can you imagine? One of the reasons I think a number of the religious people came to Jesus later is because they would remember. Remember the 30 pieces of silver? Remember the potter's field? That was in the book of Zechariah. They would know it. These people knew their Bible in those days. All right? This is where I want to leave with this, uh, this thought with you and then give it over to Victoria. What is a potter's field? So I did some research on it because I'm, I'm studying uh, Zechariah. And uh, a potter's field, let me read so I don't mess it up here. A potter's field is a field where the potter threw out the discarded, damaged rejects, damaged pots. That's what a potter's field is. The potter, the field is useless for anything else. It's just covered with all this useless pots, broken. Jesus really became the potter's field. When he died for us, this is the value of, of, of a soul. We were all broken and damaged and bruised and, 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 and useless because of sin, and our lives were a mess. Yet Jesus, 30 pieces of silver, he, he paid the ultimate price. He was 
the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He was the creator, and he died on that cross, the most expensive gift God could ever give. He gave it to us, and all we were were broken pieces of pottery. And he has, you can read in Ezekiel, he became the potter and he began working on us and, and, and we're, he's still working on us. And that thumb's going down deep inside and he's still working through some of, the, some of the areas in our life. I don't know about you, I'm not a finished product yet, but, but he's working, he's working on us. But here's the other thought I want to leave with you. God wants us to be witnesses to those broken people pieces of pottery still in the field all right he wants us to reach out that's what i love about eagle worldwide that's what i love about the kingsway blessing center they're reaching out into hurting and broken people all the time all right and um that's the messianic mandate that dr russ is talking about all right that the, we bring the good news to the broken, the afflicted, the captives. We bring comfort to those that are mourning. All right? We need to be restored. Lord, restore the joy of our salvation. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each person here. Let them know that they are loved by a God that is uh, so involved in our lives. And he paid the ultimate price. You see, we were bought with a price. Yeah, Not 30 pieces of silver, but by the blood of the lamb. That's right, amen. amen. I'm going to pause here and, and turn this over to Victoria. Just feel free to come, hon, and, uh, and uh, take the next hour and a half. That's okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Is this a clean? I need my water. Thank you, Lord. Are you being revived? Are you being refreshed and restored? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's just give him a, a praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we just bless his name. We just praise his holy name tonight. Oh, he is worthy. The Lamb is worthy. He 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 is worthy. Oh, I felt the, 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 the passion of the Father's heart just now with those uh, few scriptures that Pastor Don just shared. I don't know about you, I just felt that, 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 that depth, like Pastor John said, no, the Spirit of God is just working in our hearts in, a, in the deepest possible way ever, ever. If you have not been feeling that, that work of the Spirit, then you better check again. Something is, something is holding back the Spirit of God from moving in your life, and so we just have to surrender, we just have to yield to Him. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Well, I do have to say tonight that I had a whole lot of revelation running through my spirit. But you know, I have to say that we are living in a season where the spirit of revelation is being released like never before in the earth. Amen. And sons and daughters and those that have ears to hear is hearing what the spirit of God is saying right now to the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so last up until yesterday, I said, Lord, I'm going to share on this. I'll share on that. I'll preach on this. And, and then but, but before I went to bed last night, I said, okay, Lord, I, I said, I need a specific revelation. What is it for tonight? And guess what? I gave, he gave me, I, got, I had a dream. Yes. And most of you know that the Lord speaks to me in dreams every night. Yes. And, um, and I, I mean, as I sat down to, to put this dream together and the interpretation and what the Spirit of God is saying, there was just such a flow from the heart of, the, of God right into my spirit. So I pray that tonight that the Spirit of God will flow through me to you tonight, that you are going to receive from His Spirit and not from me. So I'm standing aside right now and I'm giving the Holy Spirit the reins of this meeting tonight. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to quickly share something that God's been speaking to me. And um, uh, he's been saying that uh, right now, w- w- the season that we're going through is God restoring. Amen. And, and so he's about to restore. When God is about to restore something, here's what's happening. It means that it's about to be brought back to, its, to the way it was originally formed, designed, created, or fashioned to be. Think about that. Not the way that it was 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years. God's original intent. God, the Father, uh, when, when he created us, he, he put a, uh, he, he said, I'm going to actually take you to the, to the books here. Uh, in, in Psalm 139, and most of you know that, and I just really, really love this because right now we are in a very critical moment, and it's a destiny moment, amen? A destiny-fulfilling moment, amen? And everything is being rightly aligned and rightly positioned according to the will and the plan of God to usher in this restoration that we are believing for because he's not just going to give partial restoration. God is not just going to restore, uh, you know, a, a, a few things to us. God's intention is to fully restore us back to the, the original intent that he had in his, in his heart when he created us. So we have to be, we got to be thinking and, and seeking God right now. Lord, and this is why he said we all have a purpose here on earth. We all have a, a mission here on earth. Listen, we're not just drifting through, we're not just drifting through life right now. We are, we are, we are on, we are with a mission. We are purposeful in life right now now, especially in this moment that we are living in, we need to live life with a purpose. Amen. Knowing that we're headed somewhere and I'm, as I'm going to share my dream, it's actually the dream was so clear and so incredibly amazing. I love dreams. Anybody love dreams in this house? Come on now. Let's just give it up for the dream sisters and the dream team around here. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And those that are watching online, I know we got a lot of men, a lot of dreamers in Eagle Worldwide Ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. And so God is returning us to his original intent for our families, for our church, for our nation. How about the nations of the earth? There's a lot, a whole lot of shaking going on, but it's a good shaking. Amen? Because he's shaking everything that can be shaken. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. So let's just look at Psalm 139. I'm going to quickly share this before I get into my dream. But Psalm 139 in the, um, uh, okay, gee, I, I have a wrong translation here. I meant to bring my, my passion, but uh, 139.13, um, it says here, and I just made a few notes from it, but it says, we are carefully, skillfully, he shaped you from nothing to something. He saw who he created you to be before you came to be. The number of days planned for you to be on the earth are recorded in his book. So do you know you have a book with your name in heaven? And how about Psalm 139.5? It says he's gone into your future to prepare the way. In other words, he's going before you. Amen? And in kindness, he followed behind you. So not only is he going before you, he's going behind you. Amen? And it says to spare you from the harm of your past. How cool is that? To spare you from the harm of your past. He never intended for our past to destroy us. He intended our past to mold us into who we are, uh, who he wants us to be. That our experiences in life will mold us. That we learn from them. Amen? And he says he laid his hand on you. He laid his hand on you. So you're hedged in. You're hemmed in. Amen? By the, by the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. And so God has your name, the length of your days, and your purpose written in his book in heaven. Amen? And so because, and so, so he knows what you're supposed to do. And so right now, as God is bringing restoration, we must be seeking him for what is his original intention for you? 
What am I called to do? And, and, and I believe that God, when we ask him for bread, he wouldn't give us a stone. Amen? And we, when we ask him for a, a fish, he wouldn't give us a serpent. And so as we ask, have you been seeking the Lord? Because, you know, he orders the steps of the righteous man. Amen? And he would direct our step. Even if we're going in the wrong direction, he'll bring us back on track because that's who he is. And he is just really right now passionate about us fulfilling our purpose and our destiny. And, and there are a lot of, like, you know, like Sister was saying last night and um, um, Apostle Sandra, there are a lot of good things, but not everything is a God thing. There are a lot of good plans, but not every plan is God's plan for you. We got we to gotta seek the heart of God to know his plan for your life. Amen? Amen. Because the, the devil has a plan to scatter our focus, to get us running after this, running after here, running there and everywhere because he wants to wear the saints down. And the Bible says that in the book of Daniel. He wants to wear us down. And so, so, he's, so, so we're chasing after what we're going to do rather than how can we be. He wants us to be with him. He wants us to find his heart before we can find his will. Amen. And only in his heart can his will be, be found. Only in the heart of God can his will and his plan for our lives can be found. And right now, uh, there, is a, there is a, I mean, the, the Dr. Ross and, and others are just, uh, are just uh, belting forth right now. S find yourself in that secret place. Find him in that secret place. Why is that? Because we really need to know God's heart for us right now. If there's any time in, in, in life and in uh, in history that we need to know the plan of God. It's this very moment. It's such a critical moment because, we're, because we all know that, that the end is near. Amen. And so I'm going to get into my dream right now because I started speaking from my dreams. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share the dream because it's pretty straightforward for those of you that understand dream interpretation. Okay, so we were living in a big glass building, glass house, okay, with glass fences all around the property. It seemed like we were waiting to board a flight. We're waiting right now. We're, we're in a waiting, but as we're waiting, as we're tearing for the Lord, you know, waiting on the Lord to come, we're, we're, we're taking ground, amen? And, and we know that that flight, we're waiting for the flight for eternity, amen? From the, the, the flight from earth to heaven, that's where we're headed. The building had offices with cubicles, and so the building looked like it was a, it was a, a house and an office building in one. But it had cubicles, it had living rooms, it had kitchens and, and bedrooms. Everything was open for all to see. Nothing was hidden. I was making sure all the glass panes connecting the fences around the properties were secured and properly attached. Someone came and made an announcement that all our luggage was put away. We were actually living without our luggage and with only a, a small hand luggage with a few necessities. I thought in the dream, I can really live without all, all this stuff anyways. I did not miss it. Then the focus was turned on our jewelry co collection that we had with us. Word came that each person was required to bring their most valuable, most treasured ring in their collection to the jeweler that was in the house. And he was a world-renowned jeweler. You know that, who that is, right? That's the Lord. I looked around and I noticed many had several rings, mostly costume jewelry. Looks like gold, but was not. Many diamond looking, but was not real diamond. Everyone got busy trying to find a ring that was of most worth to them. Some did not even have one. So here's what the Lord spoke to me. I, I know, think about that dream. It, it's, it's so powerful for those of you that understand. Waiting to board the flight, we're headed to our eternal home. Would you all agree with me on that? And we are closer now to the finish line than we've ever been before. God is doing a quick work. He's healing us. He's restoring us. He's reviving us. He's refreshing us with the purpose. Amen? He's got a reason for doing that. 
We're headed somewhere and we're going there pretty soon, all of us. The glass building, and I believe this is very symbolic of the place the Lord is bringing his people to. Nothing hidden that will not be disclosed. Nothing concealed that will not be made known or brought to the open. God is bringing his light. The Bible says that the glory of God is arising, and we've been hearing that. What's happening in this season? The glory of God is arising like never before. Though gross darkness cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, yet his glory is arising. But you know what? With his glory comes light. Light, light dispels darkness. And so God is exposing everything that is in darkness. He's doing it in our lives personally. He's doing it in the church. He's doing it in our nation, in our communities and in the nations of the earth. Corruption is being exposed and everything that uh, lawlessness uh, and everything that is uh, in darkness is coming to the light right now. Do you agree with that? Amen. Amen. And so the Lord is is, uh, bringing light in. And so uh, I, I really believe this is where we're headed right now. The Lord said it's time for total transparency. Total transparency, nothing hidden, nothing hidden any longer. And I know that the Spirit of God's been going real deep, real deep. Uh, those that have been seeking God, He's just taking us to the depths that we've never been before. And I mean, as an intercessor, I can be repenting 24 7, but I got to get up from repentance and get to work. But, uh, but you know, because the conviction of the Spirit is constant, it's constant. Why is that? Because God loves us. Amen. He loves us so much. He's not going to leave us in our, get in, in our rut. He's not going to leave us stuck, but he's going to lift us out of that place. And the only way we could be lifted up is if we bend ourselves low in repentance. The way up is down. Amen. We can never go up unless we go down. And so God is taking, down, taking us down in our knees right now so that he can exalt us in due time. Amen. He wants us to draw near to him and he will draw near to us. Amen. And to submit, to surrender, and to yield. Not too long ago, I discovered that, you know, I made vows that I never even thought I did. Just recently, I had the word. And, um, and I, I, never, I never realized that I did. But I, as, as I began to seek the Lord about it, I realized, wait, hold on here. Yes, I didn't make a vow about, about certain things. And, and I began to repent because I thought that, okay, if I made, made these vows... What is it limiting me with? What is it restricting me? Why am I putting, uh, uh, you know, limitations, barriers? I'm putting borders around me when I make a vow. What if God wants to bless me some, uh, through one of these places that I say I didn't want to go? What if, uh, you know, wh- what if, what if, what if? And so I, I begin to search deep in my soul. And, and I mean, I just begin to surrender. I just begin to surrender. I just begin to lay it all down because I know that God's not going to send me anywhere that he's going to hurt me. I know that. Amen? And so I just said, Lord, I just want to know your will. I just want to know your way. I'm yielded. And you know, we've been giving God our yes. Every service. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, Lord. Yes to you, Lord. Yes to you. And we have to keep giving him our yes constantly because there's everything that's trying to pull us back. Everything that's trying to to, to hinder us and to put us in a cage. But even tonight, the Lord says, you're going to come out of that cage. The devil has been trying to put some of you in cages, but the Lord said, I'm lifting you out of that place, and I'm opening up the cage. And he said, you know, I had a dream the other night that I was given a check for $50. I was not expecting it, but the Lord said, this is our jubilee time. This is our jubilee time. It's restoration time. Uh, uh, Things are being brought into place. It's time for liberty and freedom in the Holy Ghost. Amen? 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 There's freedom in the Holy Ghost. There's freedom. And the Lord said, we have not yet reached that place of freedom yet. We think we have. But the Lord said, there is more. There is more. There is more. And the more we let go of the stuff that's inside of us, the more, the higher level of freedom we attain to. And so God is taking us from glory to glory. Amen. He's taking us in that place right now. The places that we've never been with him. He's, he's just, but we just have to give him our yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Okay, I just got off there. <laughs> Let's just get back on track here. Okay, and here the Lord says the glory of God is moving into the house. Uh, the glory of God is moving into the house. Amen. What's in darkness is coming to the light right now in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. And he says that, uh, that the eyes of those in the world will look upon us he, because being in this glass house, he's saying that the world is going to look upon those who confess uh, that, we are, that we belong to Jesus Christ. All eyes are going to be looking on us. This is why we're going to be living in, 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 a, in a glass house with glass fences. Everything is going to be opened. Everything is going to be transparent. Don't throw stones now. Don't throw stones now. Amen. Amen. And so the Lord is bringing a total transparency. Hallelujah. Right now in this season. And, and I really believe that the spirit of God is just going to release. I, I, I believe God is even moving tonight in this place. And those that are watching on live stream. God is moving upon hearts tonight. Maybe there's something that you've been involved in. Maybe there's something that you've been doing and you think nobody knows, no one sees. But the Lord is watching. The Lord says, remember what Moses said to the Lord when he said to show him your glory? He says, show me your glory, Lord. He said, how else can we be distinguished from the rest of the world and the rest of the nations? It's his presence with us. Amen. And so we are going to be distinguished from the rest of the world by the presence of God that surrounds us. Amen. We are going to be set apart, distinguished. The world is going to look at us. And what are they going to see when they look at us? We have to think about that. Amen. Amen. Now our luggage being put away. Dr. Russ has been preaching about the test. Dr. Russ, I've been quoting this over and over and over again. You know, I like to take Dr. Russ's quotes and repeat them over and over. Now, we've been going through the test, and you all know what, what is that test? Come on now, the rest of you, come on. You got to know what that test is. Dr. Russ says the body of Christ has been going through a test, and the name of that test is Resolve. It's resolved. And in case you haven't heard that, you got to go back and watch Dr. Russ's message. Amen? Because he's been just speaking that out. He's been speaking that over and over again. And, um, and so right now, we got a resolve to finish the race and to finish well. Amen? Amen. The Lord is taking away the baggage. He's taking away the luggage. He's, 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 he's just unloading us. And, I, and uh, I love what he says. And Dr. Russ, I quoted this you word for word from your message. He said, the Lord wants us to settle every dispute, every issue. He wants us to take no baggage across the river as we pioneer into the new land. He wants us to resolve every issue. When we're going into the deep waters and ready to cross over the river, you have to throw off all the stuff that's going to weigh you down and take you out. Amen? Yeah. It's going to take us out if we, don't, if, if we don't let those stuff go. Yeah. To cross over, we got to take all the baggage off. I love what he says here. The traditions, the family keepsake. He said, that's a general nation, that's a generational spirit, and you got to cast that thing out. Amen? You need deliverance. Amen? To get some of that stuff out, uh, out of the way. And so um, those are familiar spirits assigned to our lives from our generation that they have to go. So the Lord is saying in this dream, take the baggage out, throw it off, cast it off. It's not worth it. It's not worth your salvation. It's not your worth. Uh, uh, it's not worth it that you're going to, you know, missing out on heaven and going to hell. It's not worth it. We have to get used to living without it. So in the dream, you remember I came to a place where I realized I didn't really miss the luggage anyways. I've already lived for a little while without it. Do I really, do I really miss that stuff in there? No. I, when, when you throw it out, you're going to realize, no, I didn't miss it. So let's just throw it off. Let's just cast it off. And the devil is trying to trip and trap the people of God right now like never before. I mean, it's just silly, cunning schemes that the, that the enemy have against us. He's coming through the back door. He's coming through the side door. He's coming through every door except the front door so that we don't discern him because we're looking for him at the front door, but he's at the side door. And at the back door, he's coming from the past. Yes. 
So we got to shut those open doors, amen? We got to shut up the doors to the devil in our lives and grant him no access, amen? Because what is he doing these last days? Roaring around, roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, you got to say, he's not going to devour me. I'm not going to let him devour me, amen? He's not going to devour the children of God. We're not going to let him. We have to refuse it. We have to reject it. Devil, you are not going to devour me. Because we're going to stand and understand who we are in Christ. Amen? We're going to stand. We're going to understand our authority in the name of Jesus. The Lord said to me this morning, he said, there's grace released upon the body of Christ right now to deal with our baggage. But it's all up to us. There is a grace to forgive. There is a grace. If you've been having a hard time forgiving people, letting things go, everybody's been hurt. I don't, I, I don't know anyone that has not been hurt in life by your family, by the church, by those in authority. We've all been hurt. But it's up to us. Are we going to choose to let it go? It's, it's all up to us. We can hold on to it or we could let it go. We got to let it go because God's grace is available right now. And when, and when God's grace is available, he makes it easy. He makes it easy for us to, if you tried a thousand times to forgive, try again. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Our lives are coming under the spotlight as Christians, people of God. Will, will Jesus, will, will, will the world see Jesus or will he see the devil in us? Will we reflect his image? Will we reflect his, his presence, his love? Will we radiate his light? We have to choose that right now. What is our most valuable and treasured ring? The Lord is calling us right now to examine our lives in the area of covenant. Who and what are we in covenant with right now? That is a counterfeit to the true covenant that the Lord made with us through his shed blood on the cross. We have to examine covenant right now. There's all kind of covenants, covenanting going on right now, or so you call it covenant. But really what it is, it's an agreement, it's a contract. It's not a covenant. In our Western world, we do not understand covenant because it's not a lifestyle of Westerners. Those from other countries in Africa and, and, and a lot of third world countries, they practice covenant, so they have an understanding of it. But we don't, because if we do, we will cherish the covenant that the Lord made with us. Yes, amen. And the Lord said to me that this morning, there's a lack of understanding today in, in the body of Christ about covenant. He said that my people are going to know I am, that I am everything you need. He said, we are coming into that place right now. We're coming into a place of revelation where we're going to know that he is all that we need. He's made all, the Bible says, uh, that uh, he has made everything available to us that pertains to life and to godliness by his divine power. Amen? He's made it all available to us. He's made it all available to us through the covenant that he made with us on the cross. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, oh thank you, Jesus. Mm. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are, are you getting something from this dream here tonight? You know, I've been speaking to several people, and I even got a call this morning where someone was just confessing to me how much fear they have in their life, and uh, just, just, just fear. And the Lord says that we are allowing the world that is fear-filled, the overflow of their fear into our lives and into the church right now. Yes. It's weakening our covenant relationships. He said, he said it's, it's attacking our, our covenant, the faith that we have in a covenant with Jesus Christ. Those in the world around us, what are they? They're overflowing. Everyone's mouth is full of fear, fear, fearful, fearful words. Are we listening to fear or are we listening to faith right now? There is no shortage of that in the world. But the sad thing is it's overflowing into the church. 
And the Lord spoke to me and he says, if you have 10% fear, you only have 90% faith. If you have 30% fear, you have 70% faith. So who wants a mixture of that? And this is why the enemy comes to attack everything in our lives, who we are in Christ, our identity in Christ. What, what are we supposed to do? Because all of a sudden we have faith and fear mixed together. Listen, they're enemies of each other. We cannot have the two together in the same place operating. Either we're in faith or we are in fear. Amen? And, and our faith level has been undermined in these days like never before. People of God, we, we got we to gotta do everything that we can to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. We got we to gotta push aside. Okay, yes, I hear what's happening in the world, but I'm not going to let it take me into a rut. I'm not going to let it drag me down because there's so much fear. Fear about tomorrow. Fear about life. Fear about what if, what if. Fear about having not having enough to eat fear about your finances, fear about losing what you have. So what? We lose it all and, and, you know, and, and we live in total faith. But God is going to bring us all as the body of Christ into that place where we're going to fully trust in him. Because what is fear saying to us right now? Fear is saying to, to the Lord, I don't really trust you, God. I'm going to try to make it happen on my own. I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to fix it. So, so then we try to develop. So we go this plan. We, that, we have that plan and I had two dreams about that you know about trying to protect something and I'm running here I'm running there and the more I run the more the demons are chasing after me and the Lord said this is what's happening in the body of Christ right now that people are trying to protect what they have but you can never protect what you have because he is your protector amen he is our provider he is Jehovah Jireh and he's not going to leave us nor forsake us amen and we got to know that he's the God of all gods the king of all kings and he's the lord of all lords the lord says in the bible he said in the days of famine you shall have an abundance amen that over that even though that the world will fall apart but he says my people will never lack any good thing david says i was young but now i'm older yet i've not seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread trust me people of god you are never gonna beg bread so trust in the lord just trust him again and begin to trust him even more over and over again have he not proven himself to you look back on your life has he not been faithful to you has God disappointed you once no no he has never disappointed you amen he's never let you down he's never failed you so come on why is he gonna fail us now why is he gonna fail you now people of God so come on just let faith arise let your courage arise once again hallelujah Let's just praise him tonight. Let's just praise him. Oh, let's just thank him tonight. For he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy to receive all the glory. We exalt him. We exalt him to the highest place. We lift him up. We lift him up tonight. We lift him up. And we declare his lordship over our life, over you tonight, over our nation, and over the nations of the earth. Oh, we declare his rule, that he is sovereign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. I'm going to be wrap up here, wrapping up here in a few minutes. But we got some business to take care of as I finish up here. I think I have a couple more things to share with you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, uh, there is one other thing that the Lord spoke to me. He says right now, he said, there is a turning back to the first love passion. This is one of the restoration that's going to take place for the people of God, restoring us back to the first love passion. What did Revelation 2 says? And I love it, what it says in the passion. I know how you have bravely endured trials and persecution because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged, but I have this against you. You abandoned the passion, the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. And why is that? Because we're running here and running there and forsaking the secret place. We become strangers to the secret place. And we wonder why we have so much anxiety. We wonder why there's so much fear. Because it's a thing that we need the most. We give less, the less attention and the less time to. Because everything else swallow up our time. We've been, all our time has been swallowed up doing things in this world that we have to get done. 
and we have forsaken our first love. And I've been hearing this. I thought I was going to do a whole message on this, but the Lord wanted me to share all the rest of this, this dream to you tonight. We must examine our covenant. We must, exa we must examine our hearts. Where are we in our place of intimacy with the Lord? Listen, we've been receiving a whole lot of deposits, imp impartation at this camp this year. And the Lord was just saying that he's not just giving, allowing us to receive this for nothing so that when the fall comes, we can leak it all out. God's got a plan for us. And every year my heart sinks in September because I talk to people that I met in the summertime that were on fire, that were just fiery and, and I mean full of passion and, and, and full of zeal and full of, 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 of zest and, and, and here is September and the fire has gone out. They leaked it all out. The fire went out. They just leaked out their passion. Everything left because now they're faced with the reality of life. And we got to make a choice, people of God. We got to make a choice, a resolve. We got to resolve this night. We got to keep resolving that you are going to finish the race and you're going to finish well. And you're going to run strong. Pastor John spoke briefly about the importance of souls. And why is it the passion of the Father's heart right now? Is it the passion of your heart? Who are we living for? Are we living for ourselves right now? Or are we living to see the loss comes in? Are we going to stand before the Lord on that day with empty hands and say, Lord, here is what I have, my empty hands. There are souls of in our family that needs to be saved. And I'm telling you, people of God, this is the hour of salvation. Begin to intercede for your family. Begin to go back to them again and talk to them about the Lord. Because he's pouring out salvation right now. He's pouring out his love into their hearts. And he's melting. The Lord said, the Lord showed me this, uh, this equipment. Uh, what was it again in, in prayer there? But he was just breaking up the fallow ground. He was just plowing in those hard places, those hardened hearts, those cold hearts, and he's melting their hearts right now. Don't give up on your family member. Don't give up on your friend. Don't give up on your co-workers. Go stand before the Lord and say, Lord, this is the soul I bring to you. This is the life I bring to you today. Oh, let our life count for something. Let's just be thinking the distance. How am I going to go the distance with God? Not just for the summer camp. We can all be on fire during the summer camp but what happens when camp is over are we going to continue on with that same passion and with that same fire that is upon us this moment we have to think about those things people of God come on let's just praise him tonight oh hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah Oh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on. We are going to take a few minutes. I really believe tonight that we are going into another level, a breakthrough tonight. I'm talking about breakthrough in your life so that you can carry the fire that you received the past two nights. You need to carry the fire and God's going to break in and break through in your life tonight. So we're going to pray in the spirit for a few moments here. Oh, let heaven come in this place right now, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, shit, it is a bit of so yet about Sunday. And the level of a kind of a Sunday. Oh, shit, it is a bit of so yet. Oh, supernatural deliverance. And the level of a kind of a Sunday. Oh, those of you that have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just begin to pray in the prayer language right now. Just begin to call down heaven tonight in this place. Just begin to call down heaven tonight in this place. We call it down in your homes. Those that are watching online, just call the fire of God down tonight. That the fire of God will come and burn away the wood, the hay, and the stubble. Oh, he's going to come and burn away the dross so that the gold can come forth. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, let the gold come forth, let the gold come forth. Oh, I see a pot of gold. 
gold right now. I see a pot of gold. I see a pot of gold in the spirit world. Oh, shut up. Oh, he's about to pour out his glory. He's about to move his glory in to your life, into the church, into your family, into your household. Oh, there's another movement of the glory of God that's happening even right now, says the Lord. Oh, shut up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, shut up. Oh, Oh, nothing dead, nothing dry is going to remain inside of you. Oh, I prophesy life to come to every dry bone in this place. Anyone that's watching here tonight, and you've been feeling dried up because you've been running around, you've been chasing after something that God wants you to lay down. And the Lord is saying that tonight, as you lay that thing down, He says, I'm going to come with a fresh wind from heaven, and I'm going to blow over you, says the Lord. I'm going to blow a fresh wind, a fresh breath of heaven upon you, says the Lord. Oh, dry bones, dry bones, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a yoke breaking anointing. Oh, there is a yoke breaking anointing to set the captives free. Oh, the oppressor, that the oppressor. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, Oh, I declare that tonight that stronghold of fear, a stronghold of fear will be broken tonight. But let's just pray in the spirit. The loads that you are carrying upon your shoulders, these are things that the Lord says that has weighed you down with cares and burdens of life. He said that some of you are dealing with physical issues in your bodies that are weighing you down. And the Lord is going to remove the yoke of the oppressor upon you tonight as you release that load that you are carrying. And, uh, I'm going to quote here the scripture. Isaiah says that he will break the yoke of slavery and lift the burden, a heavy burden from your shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. So tonight the Lord is just saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, Oh, if you feel it, you got some things to lay down tonight. The Lord's been speaking to you tonight. And you've been telling him what you want and what you don't want. You don't have a choice in the matter. We have to lay it all down. We got to lay it all down. We got to lay it down. Every day, lay down your lives. Lay down your life before him. Give him everything. Give him your all. He can have it all, Lord. Every part of your world. So come, give him all of your world tonight. Oh, shut up. It's your business. It's your finances. It's your health. It's your spouse. Whatever it is. Just give it all to him tonight. And listen, he can take better care of it than you can. He can take better care of your life than you can. Because you have been doing a good job with it so far. So how about give it to him? How about surrendering to him tonight? How about let him have it all tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe that the enemy needs to be driven out. Some of you, the enemy has been after you because you got something in common with him. Because he knows that he can hold you in rebellion. He knows that he can.
can hold you in a place where you're not totally submitted to the Lord. Whatever we don't submit to the Lord, guess who's got it? The devil's got it. The devil holds whatever we cannot give to the Lord. So don't even think you're going to hold on to anything. You know, you can't hold on to your hurts and your pain any longer. We can't hold on to it any longer because that's the area of your life that the devil has domain. That's the place of your life that the devil is going to use in the, in the seasons to come, in the days to come to take you out of the pl- out of the race and out of the plan of God. And tonight, people of God, listen, this word, this dream is hot off the press, hot off of heaven's press today for you and for me. And we must respond to this revelation today. We must respond to what the Spirit of God is saying. Do you want to get on that flight? Do you want to get on that flight from earth to heaven? We're not going to be left behind. Amen? None of you are going to be left. Not one of you. Not you know your household. Not one will be left behind, but all will be saved. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, 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 I'm gonna encourage each one of you to do business with the Lord right now. Oh, just surrender, just surrender, just surrender. Oh, we can lay hands. You've been getting a lot of hands laid on. You've been getting a lot of prophetic words. Oh, but listen, what are we gonna? They're not gonna mean anything to us if we don't lay our lives down, live surrendered lives, yielded lives, submitted lives to the Lord. Oh, shut up in the Oh, we just submit to his will and submit to his ways. Oh, 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 Lord, we lay it all down. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Shadamakoria Basson, the Rabo Shane. Oh, the Abara Sunday. Oh, you just you lay it down so that you can receive something from the Lord. You're not laying this down for nothing. Oh, the Abashora Basson, the Rabo Shaye. Oh, Sandele Beko, Yanabo Show, Yanabo Say. Oh, he wants to bring you into your personal jubilee. He wants to bring you into your personal jubilee. Oh, that you can walk in a total freedom and total freedom and liberty. For total freedom and liberty. That's his desire for you and for me. But we have to choose. Are we going to let it go? Are we going to go around the same old mountain again and again? Oh, those days are over, people of God. Those days are over. We ain't going around that mountain again. There's no time left to make a lot of nap around that mountain oh we must move forward we must go forward this moment we are advancing we need to take ground we must move with him move with the spirit of god hallelujah hallelujah Oh, the Abba Sunday, many laid down lives at the altar here. Oh, those in your homes, I would encourage you, if you feel there's something you need to lay down, maybe it's something that's been taking hold of you, but just lay it down. And it seems like a good thing, but it's not the God thing, because it's taking you out of the will of God. Just lay it all down. Just lay it all down. Just give it to Him and see what He's going to do with you. Listen, hallelujah, hallelujah. He will take nothing from you that He wants to use to bless you but he's gonna have he's gonna have to know that he's got that thing that is consuming you hallelujah 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 Sunday oh we great miracles are about to happen great things are about oh I just uh, I, I saw that pot of gold and I see it again I see that pot of gold it's the glory of God and it's everything the glory is everything the glory encompasses everything and God wants to pour his glory out upon you he wants to rain it down upon you. He wants to touch your life with his glory. He wants you to be a carrier of his glory in these days that you will carry the fullness, not just the part measure. People of God, we are contending for the fullness of God. We are contending for the fullness of God in every area, not just in for finances, but in every area, the 
fullness of his will, the fullness of his plan, the fullness of his purpose, the fullness of heaven. We are contending for the fullness. We are not going to settle for just a part measure, a partial measure, but we want the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a release. There's a release. There is a release that's taking place even now as we give him our yes, our yes, our yes. Tonight the word went forth and almost every night of the camp. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Are you giving him your yes tonight? Are you giving him your yes? Oh, Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to pray in the spirit because listen, we can only take care of business in the spirit by the spirit. Our words in English language does not always do the do us justice. So we pray in the spirit and the Lord does the rest. And right now the spirit of God is doing something much deeper and much greater than we could ever ask or imagine right now. The Lord is saying, the Lord spoke to me and he says, I'm getting my people ready for the, for the, to go the distance, to go the distance, not just for this summer months. Listen, there's, there's a shift that's taking place, that's going to take place. There's, there is something that's going to burn forth in September, in the fall, that God's been preparing us in the summer here. And we have to do everything. We got to uh, utilize everything that God has given us as tools so that we can maintain what we have. We can be sustained by the Spirit of God. So people of God, hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I am going to, I'm going to come around and I'm going to anoint, I'm going to anoint. I just really feel that the Lord wants me to anoint, uh, to, to anoint people tonight. I just really feel that he's pouring out the oil, the oil of his presence. Oh, he's pouring out the oil of joy, the oil of gladness, the oil of his spirit tonight upon us. It's a fresh oil. It's a fresh anointing that's flowing. It's a fresh anointing for the race that is set before us. We've got to get it all. We've got to get the fullness of his anointing. And, 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 and only with that fullness can we go to, go to the finish line. The so people of God, let's think, finish 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 it's not how well we start but it's how well we finish this race that is set before us oh hallelujah 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 oh praise god i just want to share one more thing while you're getting prayer about souls. I want to share one one story. Just keep keeping this atmosphere. All right. Two days ago, I got an email from someone that used to attend our church. Some of you would know her, and um, she moved away, and she's uh, uh, attending another church. But she was born in Canada. But she would, grew up in Europe. Her aunt uh, was like a parent to her. And I, I want to say there's, uh, this is to say that there is hope for your loved ones. Like Victoria mentioned that, all right? Well, anyway, her aunt almost disowned her when she became a Christian, and she was hard, hard, hard. hard. Anybody have a, a relative or somebody that's really hard? You just, they, they absolutely don't want anything to do with God. They don't want you to talk about it. Well, she's turning 100 years old this Friday, all right? Well, that's not what we're clapping about. What we're clapping about is that two days ago, this person that we prayed for for many, many, many years gave her heart to the Lord two days ago. Three days, four days before she, come on. If God can reach her, God can reach your family. Do not give up on, as long as they're breathing. 